What's up guys and welcome to the 10th and final video in this video series on testing your React and Redux web applications using Jest and Enzyme. Now congratulations on making it this far, but apart from concluding this video series, I also want to use this final video to introduce you guys to Git hooks and specifically pre-push. Now if you guys have never heard of Git hooks before, don't worry. All it is is just something that we can use as developers working on our own projects or part of a team to just prevent any breaking changes being committed to a project. Now, of course, the purpose of writing tests is that it tells us if any areas of our project is breaking and if, co and if any of those tests are breaking, it allows us to go to that code and fix whatever is causing those tests to fail. Now, of course, what we want to do with Git hooks is run all of those tests in certain scenarios. Those scenarios would be when we try to commit our changes or when we try to push our changes to a remote branch or merge with master. And if any of those tests fail, then we will be unable to proceed. And of course, if they pass, then they will. Now, if you haven't already, I just want to encourage you guys to check out the official playlist for this series. Now, this is a 10 video long series, and I've covered everything to do with testing and, and React from, from unit to integration testing to testing components, reducers, action creators, simulating events. The list goes on. I think this has been a great series. I've really enjoyed making it, and I, I think you guys can really get a lot out of it if you haven't checked it out already. So if you haven't seen it already, then there's going to be a direct link in the description of this video to this playlist, and uh, i just really like to encourage you guys to, to check it out. Um, alternatively, you can search YouTube for our channel, Simple Tut, and find this playlist for yourself. I'd also like to encourage you to go ahead and check out our official Facebook page. You can find that facebook.com forward slash simple tut. Please do give us a like. Uh, whenever we release new videos or a new series, we're going to be posting those updates here. So it's a great way for you to stay in touch with us as we release new content. And of course, as always, please head over to our official GitHub page at the end of each video. As you'll know from uh, watching previous videos, we have pushed this entire project, all the work that I'm doing on the videos, I'm pushing those to this official repository for this project. Again, there'll be a link to this in the description of this video, but if at any point you guys want to check out the code that I'm writing, maybe clone the project, run it locally, um, then please check this out. And of course, as always, please like, comment, and subscribe. Your support goes a very long way to helping us continue to create the kind of content that you're watching right now. Now, as this is the final video, I think it's a good time for us to go over the project that we've been working on. As you guys already know, this is the official wireframe of the project. We've got a fairly straightforward layout here with this header section and page headline area. Um, but of course, we have this button, and when that's clicked, we dispatch an action using Redux that goes out, makes an asynchronous request to an external API. Uh, we then hide this button because we don't need it anymore, and we then use that data to render out posts on our page looking something like this. Now, let's head over to our actual React application. This is what we've been working on and I've already got it running here in the background. As you can see, it looks a lot like that wireframe. If we click this button, it disappears, and in its place comes the posts that we've already gone out and fetched from that API. Now, actually implementing uh, Git hooks into our project is gonna be very easy. All we are gonna do is actually make use of a library called Husky. Um, and as I've already mentioned, this is going to be more configuration than anything else. But before we can actually use this library, we need to install it in our project. Now I'm on the official uh, Husky repository on GitHub. I'm going to post a link in the description of this video to this very page. But you can just do a Google search for Husky JS, and it definitely is going to come up. Um, but of course, once you're here, let's just... Uh, copy this line here to install this 
in our project. Alternatively, you can just do npm install husky save dev. And of course, go ahead and click on enter. Once you do, it's going to install that dependency into the project for you. Uh, I'm going to pause the video and come back once it's installed because it may take a couple of seconds. Awesome. So I've actually gone ahead and installed that. Now, uh, at this point, I'm ready to actually implement it into the project, which is also really, really easy. Uh, it's literally just going to be adding a simple J, uh, JSON object to our package JSON file. Now, as you already know, I'm sure package JSON is just basically where we define all the basic uh, dependencies and configuration uh, that we need to uh, for our project. So, for example, we have you know React and all these dependencies here. Uh, we've actually done a, a, few, a little bit of work in this file uh, earlier on in the series. Uh, when we updated the, the version of React that we were working with. But what I want to do is just add this uh, JSON object for Husky uh, just after our skips uh, our scripts object. So I'm going to go ahead and paste what I copied in here. Uh, and as you can see, we already have some uh, hooks predefined. So at the moment, we have one for pre-commit and one for pre-push. Um, I'm actually going to remove the one for pre-commit uh, for me, I just I want to keep it simple and focus on pre-push. Uh, so this is going to run every single time that we try to push changes to our remote repository. Now at the moment, the script that it's going to be running is our test script. Now at the moment, uh, that is actually the, the, the name of the script that we have configured in our project. If you're also working with Create React App, it will also be the same for you unless you've manually gone in and changed this. Um, but let's actually just have a look at what happens when we run this. So I'm going to come over into my terminal and I'm literally just going to run it. So npm test. And as you can see, by default, this actually runs a watch command. So I can manually select the type of test I want to run. If I select A, it runs all my tests. And as you can see, we currently have 21 tests to run. Now, Obviously, I don't want to run this in watch mode when I am trying to uh, work with Git hooks. So to disable that, before we run npm test, I'm going to say ci equals true. And that's just going to disable that uh, watch mode. And it's just going to allow us to run the tests immediately. And if, of course, any of those tests fail and we have breaking changes, it's, it's not going to allow those uh, changes to be pushed to our remote branch. Now, believe it or not, that's literally as simple. Uh, that's literally all you need to do to implement uh, Git hooks and pre push into our project. Now, believe it or not, when I actually try to commit and push these changes to the branch that I've been working on for this project, it's actually going to run the script already. Um, so I'm going to be able to show you an example without making any changes to this project, which is fantastic. So let's come back over to our terminal. As you know, I'm running this watch command. I'm going to end that. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how this works. So as you know, I'm working on a feature branch. And uh, I, I obviously have some changes that you've seen me just make in my package JSON, which I'm going to push. So I'm going to do a git, uh, git add and a git commit. And I'm just going to say that it's pre-push. So I'm ready to push. So I want you guys to check to focus on uh, what happens here. So, so I'm going to go ahead and push those changes. So git push origin and the name of the branch I've been working on. Now, when I hit return, what's going to happen is Husky's going to kick in. It's going to run all the tests. And if they pass, which I think they will, uh, which I think we can all be fairly confident they will. We've not made any changes to the project. It's going to go ahead and it's actually going to uh, complete the push and push those changes to a remote branch. So let's run this. As you can see, Husky is running. All my tests will now run as they do. And as you can see, the tests have passed. So the changes have been pushed to our remote repository. And that is not only the end of this tutorial, but it's also the end of what has been a fantastic video series on testing your React 
and Redux web applications. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching and working through the videos as much as I've enjoyed creating this content and bringing it to you. Um, if you guys have any questions on the videos that you've watched, then please post a comment and either myself or maybe even another developer watching will help you out if they get to it before I do. But again, I just want to ask you guys to uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Of course, your support goes a long way to helping me continue to create this kind of content. But as always, I just want to congratulate you guys because it really is much deserved. Um, this has been a long series, 10 videos, um, and some of them have exceeded an, a, a whole hour. So we've really covered a huge amount. You guys are definitely... Um, experts in in testing and everything to do with testing and and react so congratulations again and i look forward to the next one